In this tutorial, I'm gonna set up our first person character controller to have a Raycast interaction. That way it can interact with anything that's in our scene and it'll send a message to that game object so that game object can then do something. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. So here I am in Unity. And what I wanna be able to do is to take the first person character controller, the starter asset that I dropped into my game in the last scene, I want to be able to have that interact with anything that's in my scene. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm setting it up so that it's going to be fairly global. So the first thing I need to do is actually set up an input for that. So attached to my player capsule, down at the very bottom, you can see there is a player input component and that points to the actions set up in the starter assets. So I'm gonna double click here and then you can see here are the inputs that are set up by default. So we've got move, look, jump, and sprint. And then those are bound to specific keys. So WASD, the left, right, uh, up, down arrow keys, as well as the left stick for the gamepad. What we need to do is to set up a left mouse button for interaction. You can do this with trigger, you can do this with gamepad as well, but I'm gonna set up for my left mouse. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the way I'm gonna do that is under actions, I'm gonna go ahead and click the little plus button. And then in actions, I'm gonna do a left mouse. All right, so, and this is gonna be a button type action. Now I need to go ahead and add a binding. So binding is what specific keys or buttons on a gamepad that you're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the path and then I've got the option of listening, which won't work for the left mouse because it's in this UI, but we can go easily go to mouse and left button. Okay, so now we're binding to that specific button. The other thing we need to do here is the type of interaction that it is. So the way we're gonna add this is to click on plus. And then we've got options for hold, multi-tap, press, slow tap. We're gonna do a press event. And then we're also going to make sure that it's press only. So only when I press down is it going to fire off this event. Okay, so that is good. I have auto save on, so let's go ahead and just close this window. So that's in. Now, the next thing we need to do is I like to go ahead and set up a global manager or a game manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up an empty game object and I'm just gonna put in dash dash game manager. That way it kind of distinguishes itself. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add an empty game object inside. I like to call this the player manager. I'm gonna attach all the scripts that are specific to the player to this one game object. And so you might have a empty for score, an empty for UI updates, all kinds of different empties. But this is a way for you to have all of your scripts compiled into one location so that it's easy to find what's going on and what, what's happening there. So in this case, I want to, with my player manager, go ahead and add a new Playmaker FSM. So I'm gonna add FSM. And in this first state, what we wanna do is to listen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just call this listen. I'm also gonna name this Playmaker FSM as uh, interaction. There we go. And then in the first state, what is it we wanna do? Well, we wanna to listen to see if somebody has pushed the left mouse button, okay? So we're gonna do that here in with the Playmaker Actions, and I have this down in the Player Input Actions here. You can see we've got Player Input Button Events as the very first option. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. So we're gonna add that. And then here, it you can see we've got a red box saying something's wrong we need to specify the game object that contains the inputs. And that's our player capsule. That's what contains that player input component. So we need to specify that we're gonna be getting our inputs from player capsule. Then we need to specify which input it is it that we're listening for. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little dot there. And I have a lot of these from uh, other projects. And so what I wanna do is to go ahead and type in mouse left. And there we go, we've got our left mouse action that we set up in our player inputs. So I'm gonna double click on that. And that adds it to that field. All right, the next thing we need to do is we have is pressed event. So if somebody does press this button, then we want to go to a new state to then accomplish something. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new event. And I'm gonna call this raycast. And this allows us to add a transition to another state. 
So I'm going to click on that. Take the Raycast. I'm controlling clicking or command clicking. And then that taking that to a new state. And in this state, I'm just going to call it Raycast because that's what we're going to do within this specific state. So let's see if we can get that spelled right. There we go. Now that I have that, I want to perform a Raycast action. So let's just type in in our actions. We're going to do Raycast. Add that here to my state. And then what is a Raycast? A Raycast is firing out like a laser line. We can have that specified like it's a finger that's getting pushed out. But the point is, does this Raycast touch something or does it not touch something? Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is we need to determine from where we want this laser line to originate, where is it going to start. And so we want to be a specific game object and then if we look at our player capsule, inside there is player camera root. Because this is first person, really, we're looking from the, the player's perspective. So we want to fire out a laser line from the center of the eyes. So we want to fire from the player camera root. All right, so then we've got a direction, okay? So currently the direction of the player eyes coming out, that is the Z uh, direction in a positive Z. So if I wanted to point out in back of me, it would be a negative Z. I also have left and right and up and down, which is the X and the Y. But in this case, we're just gonna fire in a one on the Z axis. Now that isn't distance. We have distance down here. So we're gonna go ahead and leave spaces self, but the distance, this is important because how far do we want that to reach out? Currently right now, because I'm trying to do something where I'm actually touching something, I don't want that to be a very long distance. So I'm going to take that from 100 units, 100 meters. I'm going to take that down to, let's say, four units. Okay, so it's four units out in front of the player. I'll be able to interact with something. The next thing we need to do here is hit event. So if we did hit something, we're going to go to a new state to then perform an action. All right. So I'm gonna call this a new event, and I'm gonna call this interact. I'm gonna go ahead and add that transition. We're not gonna go off to that state just yet, um, but we also here want to store what game object we hit, okay? So that way we're gonna be able to send a message to that specific game object. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new variable here, and I'm gonna call it hit object, and then we should be good, all right? So once it's performed this action, this Raycast action, right? Sticking our finger out, did we hit something? If we didn't, we wanna be able to go back to continually listen if we re-hit the, the mouse button. So the way we're gonna do that is with a next frame event. So next frame, we're gonna perform that after the Raycast. And I'm just gonna put in a new event and I'm just gonna call it back add that transition, and we're just gonna go back to listen. So here what's happening is we are listening for that left mouse button. If we do hit left mouse button, we're going to shoot out a Raycast. If it does not hit something, we're just gonna go back to our listen state. Now that we've accomplished that, we want to be able to take our interact and then perform an action. So I'm gonna select that transition, that event, and go back to a new state. So I'm left clicking or right clicking and holding down the command or control key, going off to a new state. And we're gonna call this send event. Again, just like this says, we're gonna send an event to a game object. So we'll do a send event. And we're not gonna send it to self, we wanna send it to a game object. And then the game object that we wanna send it to is a specific game object. And we're gonna uncheck the variables here so we can use our variables and we're gonna send it to whatever game object that we hit. So we, if we hit a game object, what game object is we hit, that's the game object I'm gonna send a message to. And then the send event is, we're gonna set up a global transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I already have some global events set up, and one is interaction. So I'm gonna set up a uh, interaction global event. If you don't have this, you can go new global event and add interaction. All right, so now that we've got that, we're sending an event out, but we again, we still wanna be able to continue to listen if we've hit our left mouse button. So just like here, we've set up a next frame event. We're gonna do the same thing here. So once it's done sending that event out to our game object that we hit, 
we're going to do a uh, next frame. And again, I've got this set up for uh, back, and so I just copied that and pasted that. So I need that event, and I just take this back to listen. Okay, so that is all set up, all ready to go. Now the other thing I like to do here is just to colorize these. So if I'm just listening for something, I like that to be blue. Raycast, I'm performing an action. I usually like those to be green. And then send event, I'll just maybe have that be orange. And this is a way for me to just be able to, at a glance, look at, see what's happening with a, uh, a Playmaker FSM. All right, so now that I have that set up, let's go to our treasure chest. So in our treasure chest, I have a couple game objects inside. So there is the body, then there's the lid. The lid has a pivot point that's on the very back of the lid, and I can rotate this to open the lid. So let's go ahead and undo that. I also have inside a point light, which is turned off, and I can turn that on. Okay, so let's go to our treasure chest. I've already set up the Playmaker FSM for this, but you can, I'll show you what I have. In the start state, I don't have anything. There's nothing in there because I'm not performing an action until my player has clicked the scheme object. Once they do, we're setting up a global transition, which our player is sending to the scheme object. So to set up a interaction, you can easily just add global transition and interaction is there. That's the global transition I set up. If you don't have that in your list, you can go to custom events and then it'll appear in that list there. So if I go and you can see that it now adds interaction with a new state. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that because I already have one. So let me show you what I'm doing. So I'm activating a game object and I'm activating the point light. So that way, when we do click on this, I'm turning that light on that's inside the chest. The other thing that I'm doing is a tween rotation and I'm tweening the lid and I'm rotating it in a negative 30 degrees. So that's opening the lid and I'm performing that action over a period of 0.4 seconds. And that is it. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So I wanna to go to my game manager, player manager. So if I'm not clicking on the chest, right? It's going and it's firing out that raycast. And if it doesn't find a game object or if it doesn't connect with a game object, it's gonna go back to listen. So if we do click on our chest and get close enough, we click on the chest, it's sending a message to the chest, then the chest is opening and it's turning on the light. So there you go, we've now set up a player that can interact with anything within our scene. Hey, hope you enjoyed that tutorial, something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.